Um, yeah, I was testing a different audio setup and then my Zoom kept crashing. So I have to just call it today, but thank you. Um, cool, welcome, call 61. We will discuss Altair a bit, uh, Paratosh, and I think Leo are gonna talk about um, some metrics naming that might be useful. Talk about research updates. Uh, if you, you're probably aware, there's a number of other things going on. Specifically, the Ryanism uh, calls. There's a call, call yesterday. Thank you, Proto. And there was, um, there's also a fortnightly merge specific call. So, although we can certainly answer a couple of questions here, if you want to dig into any of that, um, I think it'd be best to use the appropriate channels and the appropriate calls uh, to dig deep into that. Um, I think the focus here will likely be on on Altair for the time being. Um, I, on the client updates, I'd love to hear just general progress on Altair, uh, specifically uh, just kind of the feel on where we're at on engineering. Um, are there any huge um, blockers, any, any uh, skeletons in the closet as we've been kind of modularizing components and stuff? So, so uh, help us understand that. Um, so that said, let's start with client updates and we can go with uh, Prism. Yeah, hey guys, um, Terrence here from Prismatic Labs. So let's um, so let's chat about a tear first. So from the tear front, um, it's a little bit slower, but uh, we're making progress. So the latest progress is that um, we implemented the a tear uh, beacon state um, with the uh, with the um, replacement and the um, additional fields. So um, we're doing some testing around that state to make sure that that's implemented correctly. And uh, I'm, I'm almost done with the process sync, uh, sync uh, com committee. And uh, so the next thing in my to do this is to work on the um, accounting reform. So that's us for our tier. Um, we're pretty confident that once we have the foundation for the half working logic done, then the rest can move pretty quickly. And uh, in terms of the merge, we released a demo for Prism and Catalyst. So I hope that uh, people have tried that. And uh, on the current work front, we did some optimization for the Slasher DB schema for a more efficient storage. We started working on uh, with subjectivity sync so people can pass the state or a URL slash block root to the COI and, and the node can sync from there. And we also fix a few bugs on the peer scoring front. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Terrence. Let's do Teku. Hey, everybody. It is I this week. Um, yeah, so the last little while has been pretty much all about Altair. Uh, progress is good. Uh, so we have updated to the alpha.3 reference tests, and almost everything is passing. Uh, as I understand it, there are a couple of sanity checks which are failing. So there's some insanity going on somewhere and we are failing to decode the SSZ in one of the um, fork choice tests, which is weird because we pass all the other SSZ tests. So I uh, just need to investigate what's going on there. But otherwise, I think we're in pretty good shape on Altair. Um, other than that, we've been making optimizations for the workload on Prata. Uh, mostly improvements to peer scoring, uh, updating the latest BLAST library, and doing a bit more batch verification of uh, signatures in attestations. And that's pretty much it, except to say, uh, like everybody else, we're hiring. <laughs> Thank you. I have a question, I have a request. When y'all do figure out the SSE decoding issue, um, if that is in fact, some sort of corner case that we're not covering in the SSE test, let us know so we can get a test specific for that in the in the right place rather than kind of implicit in the core choice test. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Okay, load start. Hey everybody. Uh, so real quick, this, we cut a new release 0 0.19 um, on, on Tuesday. It's pretty chunky uh, and it's we're now supporting the latest LTS of Node version 14. Uh, we added queuing to our gossip validation engine, and we also have threaded BLS verification now. So 
all these things kind of combined, um, much more stable node running. Uh, as far as Altair goes, uh, we have done a lot, of, a lot of the preliminary work for for Altair, just ensuring that we have support for different data structures, uh, updating the database. Uh, we also have a naive implementation of the Alpha Three state transition, and it's passing spec tests. So I think the upcoming things are um, making something that's more that matches our fast state transition implementation, uh, and also implementing the various network updates, which we have not yet tackled. Great. Did y'all integrate the um, fork choice test yet? Oh, we have not. Uh, okay. We that, let me add that to our list. Cool. And the other clients, as we go, if we you can let me know if y'all integrated those, that'd be cool. Great. Thank you. Let's move on to Lighthouse. We are also passing the Alpha Three consensus tests. Danny, Danny, what was that? I missed what you said just then. That you wanted you to say that fork choice test now in the in the test vectors um, and so i'm just curious especially because tech you ran into some decoding issues i'm curious whether you've integrated those yet no so we haven't done the four choice ones just the consensus one so far it's all about that um i'm passing those uh we're also working um on alter networking um with born and age um, we have our doppelganger implementation in for review. That's the protection against running multiple DCs. Um, we've been doing a lot with the memory allocated still. We've got kind of three to six times memory savings. Um, they're kind of in review and we're still squeezing a bit more out of it. Um, we're working on a UI development. Um, so it's in working on screenshots now and designs and it should be starting coding at the end of the month. Um, and we're also working on preparing for the merge test net um, and rayon rain is in um, hackathon. That's it from us. Great. And Nimbus. Hi. Uh, so regarding uh, the Altair uh, hard fork, uh, for now we have the low impact and preparatory changes uh, merged. Uh, still uh, evaluating the modernization of the code base, uh, for example, the beacon state. Uh, the main uh, thing that we need to solve is that currently we assume that we have um, a kind of one fork at a time design, but when we replay all state uh, around the transition, we need to be able to handle it uh, properly. Uh, otherwise, we uh, improved performance of uh, Nimbus. So uh, we had some bottleneck uh, real related to printing and uh, we also uh, added uh, attestations uh, batching and uh, this uh, improved performance on raspberry pi uh, to be able to handle uh, the increased load on uh, Piermont and hopefully uh, prater as well uh, regarding prater we also added uh, a prater page uh, to our nimbus book and we also merged uh, a long-standing uh, feature request uh, fallback if one provider so that you can point to GEF and also Infura in case your GEF instance fails so you don't have any issue with producing blocks. Uh, otherwise, we also um, finished uh, our uh, HTTP server work because uh, in Nim we didn't have any uh, HTTP uh, secure HTTP server that was working with our uh, stack. And so this means that in the future, uh, you won't need to add the insecure option to have metrics. And uh, this also means that uh, our REST API is uh, um, almost finished. It's just pending review uh, and you won't need to use uh, JSON RPC, which was uh, used as a stopgap. And lastly, on the DevOps front, uh, we will be migrating our fleet uh, away from uh, AWS to save on costs. Uh, for now, we are migrating only one node, but uh, it's possible that in the coming weeks, we migrate uh, some more and we have some downtime in, in between. Got it. I have a question for those that have done the doppelganger protection, uh, especially after the Prouder launch with Nimbus, did you all decide, is there a, a workaround for Genesis that you have integrated or is that just still a, 
case where people are offline for a couple of epochs. Uh, given that it happens once every six months, we didn't work on the workaround yet. Gotcha. Paul, did y'all do anything with that? Um, I think our plan is to just not enable it at Genesis. Right, like a flag explicitly. Yeah, that's right. Cool. Okay, thank you. Um, on, I know everyone's kind of working on different ways to modularize the code base, handle these, these fork data structures and fork logic. Uh, is there any particular blockers or issues people run into that want advice or information sharing here? Ask away. Yeah, cool. Reach out to each other if you need. Moving on to Altair, as y'all saw Alpha 3, was launched. I actually was, I realized I did something embarrassing, but then Protosite is not too, too embarrassing. But I, I realized I, st I started at alpha one instead of alpha zero um, and actually confused myself when I was releasing alpha three and was like, wait, we haven't done four of these. Um, so anyway, I had a little off by one error in my head. But uh, that is out. That is really close to honing in on uh, a final version. I, I, uh, I think there's a couple of cleanups. There's some like additional testing being done. Uh, but nothing substantive that is in dev currently. And the plan would be to get people to um, to kind of get thumbs up from engineering teams that implementations are done. Um, and also obviously any feedback uh, that you might have uh, so we can hone in on, on finalizing that. We are at kind of the beginning of April. We had discussed doing uh, this release to mainnet in June. Uh, that's beginning to be maybe not aggressive, but uh, the optimistic timeline. I think we should definitely shoot for June, July. Um, but I have a feeling based off of where people are at that we're not quite ready to talk about timelines. Uh, does anybody have strong feelings about earliest timelines currently that they want to share? Uh, we need to like two months is lead time for audits. So, uh... That, that's a hard constraint. Okay. If you are looking to do audits, I would schedule them right now uh, because the way that um, my understanding of the, the current auditing industry is that people are incredibly busy and getting timelines even within the next three months might not be realistic. Yeah, I can second that. Um, any other comments on Altair planning? Um, I, I figure in the next couple of weeks, we'll have a much better visibility on this. Okay. Uh, so let's keep digging in and communicating quite a bit as things are ironed out so that we can begin to set some uh, target dates. Okay, uh, Leo and Perry are, have been discussing some standardization of some core Prometheus metrics that might help uh, in various ways. Perry, Leo, do you want to talk about that? Uh, yes, um, so yes, uh, the idea is to try to standardize some of the metrics and uh, the plan is to start just with a few of them, uh, say about a dozen of them. Uh, we have prepared a document that I just uh, I just shared the link uh, on the chat, uh, in which we have two sets. Uh, one of uh, them we call the minimal set. Uh, it's about a dozen metrics that we think are interesting to look, um, in, in particular in the context of the Prater test set. And so um, we provide the list of the metric, the description, the reasoning, and uh, we look at four of the five clients. And I think at least for the first batch of metrics, all of them already implemented them. Um, uh, they, the problem is that they just have different names and we are not 100% sure that this is what it really is. Um, so the idea is to really um, uh, start with just uh, these uh, few ones and start on it into a way so that uh, we can monitor it and make uh, dashboards and, and, and really see easily what is going on. 
Um, so what it would be really great if is if um, you know the different plan teams can um, either uh, choose or select one person that can help us with this um, process. Uh, we promise to take as least as time as possible from you guys. We know that you are very busy. Um, but yeah, if if we could try to uh, set some call uh, in which we can discuss, for example, which of these metrics are the most relevant, and if the numbers that we yeah, sorry the metrics that we uh, got here are correct or not, uh, and, and and discuss on that, that would be great. Um, so um, yeah, we will try to set up a meeting uh, within the next few weeks uh, to discuss these metrics. And it would be great if the uh, client teams can select one person that can um, join this meeting and, and let us know uh, which uh, which person is that. Uh, Pari, did you want to add something else? No, that's it, I think. Thank you. All right. Great. So yeah, Any of you have questions? Yeah. One thing I want to reiterate is that um, for client ease of, of client fluidity. Uh, I think we, we did a good job with the validator interchange database, but one thing that I think is locking people in and here even more is um, their monitoring setups. Uh, people do a lot of work to get things set up and monitored properly and then don't want to do that again. Um, and this could potentially enable uh, some, some better fluidity there. Um, Leo and Perry, what were the particular use cases that are driving this effort on your end? Is it primarily monitoring? I mean, obviously it's monitoring, but um, yeah, what, what are y'all attempting to do here? Yeah, so um, I think, yeah, that's that's what we discussed with Perry. Um, several use cases in, in the context of the Prater node, I think uh, Perry has very clear uh, use cases. Uh, do you want to mention those, Perry? Yeah, sure. So um, it pretty much started with the Prata setup. Um, I wanted to create a bunch of dashboards to monitor how the testnet was going, but quickly ran into extensive amount of having to look at three or four different documentations to figure out the exact metric names. So I looked at what pain points were there and what metrics were relevant for me to know that stuff is working perfectly fine. Um, and I just sort of spoke with Leo, discussed them if he was also on the same page, and then we listed them down. Okay, cool. Uh, regarding monitoring, um, I've seen that the if 2.0 API repo uh, has a v1 release. So I assume that um, it can be targeted uh, as a standard for some common monitoring across clients. Uh, which which link is that, uh, Ami? Uh, I'm adding it on the chat. The APIs are different than these monitoring metrics, right? They're they're fairly independent. There actually exists a metrics document which tried to standardize this, like back maybe a year ago. So that would also be a starting point. <laughs> Maybe that, yeah, I'm growing old. Um, but yeah, some of those metrics match. Sorry, guys. Uh, sorry. I, th I think yes, it's done. Um, uh, on the Lighthouse side, we've also been quite interested in um, standardizing metrics to enable client fluidity. Um, one of the approaches that we've looked at taking is there's a bunch of um, community members, I guess, that have made some pretty cool dashboards. Um, I forget their names now, but there's some some quite popular ones. Uh, typically, they, they work with Prism. Um, so the approach we've been taking is trying to get these dashboards and then and then use that set of metrics to indicate that people you know want to use it and then try and focus on those first. Um, so that's that's kind of the route we've been taking. We had someone on that full time, but they got distracted. But I think they'll they'll get back onto that full time. So, my house is is keen to standardize there. Would it be possible for you for, for you to put us in touch with this person so that we could at least get the information about the dashboard and then co correlate that with what we already have in a metric set, a minimal metric set? 
Yeah, sure. So something I found with metrics is that it varies a lot depending on what you want to do. So if you're like sitting there and you've got like, you know, two main net validators, there's a certain amount of things you want to do. If you're trying to monitor the health of the network, there's two things you want to do. And if you're someone like me, there's a whole other set of things you want to do. So um, yeah, it is. I, I, that's just one thing that I've found. But I think um, it, there's the Lighthouse um, has a UX channel. People share some of those in there. I think Monkey 82 uh, is someone that's made a good one. Um, I can also see Yoldar has, has tried to convert it over to Lighthouse. Um, but perhaps the Prism Discord, just reaching out there and seeing what people are using is a good idea. Right, so we noticed that actually uh, most of the clients, they already have uh, a, a number of metrics that are already common to, to all of them. So I think uh, the best way to start is to, um, you know, to, to decide uh, uh, this common intersection between uh, all, the, all the clients or at least most of the clients and I start from that point. Um, so I think in, in the document, we had a small table uh, where you can have uh, other contact person for each client. Um, so if you can, uh, you can go ahead and, and fill it, um, then we can contact this person and, and try to set a common call. And so we can all discuss about what are the most common or like what are the metrics that make sense uh, to most of the clients. Yeah, we have probably a thousand or something. So there's, there's quite a few, a few but keen, keen to help out. Okay, any other comments or questions on this before we move on? All right, thank you, Perry and Leo. Are there any research updates you'd like to share today? Um, yep, I have. Um, uh, okay. Oops, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. Okay. You, okay, I'll go. Um, I'm happy to share that the new folk choice spec is ready. This has been in the works for a few months, so pretty excited to share that. It's PR2292 on uh, the specs repo. Please do check it out and leave comments and feedbacks. And if there's something specific you want to talk about, you can ping me or Danny. Uh, the summary of changes for this um, PR is that the block tree structure is changed and the way that latest messages are counted for has changed uh, during uh, ghost execution. And the happy um, news here is that there's no change to uh, the network structure. So latest messages, uh, Votes remain the same, uh, the way latest messages are structured remain the same. And overall, this has good security and good performance. And um, yeah, we had a few setbacks in the research. That was the cause for the delay, but it seems like this is um, a really good fix that we have arrived at. Uh, does that new fog choice imply that we need to have uh, two fog choice implementation or can we use it to replace the world chain from uh, Genesis? Um, I think it should work. So basically, as long as um, that specific attack has not happened, uh, both folk choices are going to give the same result. And as far as we know, nothing like that happens since Genesis. So that folk choice and, should be good. I mean, also Very it doesn't matter once it's finalized, yeah. right? So only if we had a non-finalized chain, that would matter in any way. Yeah, both are rooted in finality. And so it... It could you could imagine it in causing a minor reorg in that stretch after finality if you switched it, but that's fine. Right, exactly. But like once you have switched and you have finality, you there's no need to remember the old fog choice rule. Yeah, exactly. It's written as such. It is an, an, a, a change to the the phase zero to kind of the base fork choice. Um, like I guess we can we can make it so that it can only get activated on finality or something like that, and then you at least should never have to use both fork choice rules at once. Yeah, but even then, in ninety nine point nine nine percent of cases, uh, if you just switch the fork choice, it's going to give you the same exact answer as the old one. Right. Right. Yeah, I guess true. You can just set, just make it a rule that everyone implements a new fork choice at a certain time of the day and then 
that should also work here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, it would also probably be fine if some of the nodes uh, have upgraded to the new one and some of them are operating on the old one, but obviously that's, um, yeah, might get tricky. Yes, yeah. so if, if we said that we were all gonna change at some point in the day, then that would mean that we at some point the clients need to have both of them, right? Right, that's exactly what, what I thought Mami's question meant. Um, I think, um, yeah, to, to make the transition, I, there would have to be those two implementations living in the client at the same time, um, at least until we are done with the transition. Not even worth that complexity. Because if anything, you like if there were this type of attack, you might have a, a disagreement for some short amount of time, but even justification and finality still, it's not like you're right. removing things from your fork choice. So things can still move on. Right, you're just adding, so I guess like, we can probably easily show that there's no safety issue with this, with having both at the same time, right? And then I guess, yeah, Mami is right. Like we can just make it an upgrade. Yeah, I think that we can just get, mm -hmm. just get all the clients to release in the same week or something. It sounds like it, it would be reasonable. I, that's what I would argue. Yes, but we can we can just we can think about it a little bit more. But I that's my understanding is that we can just it's safe to roll it out like that. And something that we are looking for specifically uh, as you look at it is just kind of like sanity check that engineering complexity and and that of this change is not massive uh, that it. You can generally kind of use some of your same structures and algorithms in a slightly modified way, which we believe this case. Anything else on fork choice before we move on? Just to be clear, it's not for Altair, right? We are not currently planning on releasing it at Altair. Again, it is a, it's a modification of the phase zero rule. And so once we do have it um, spec'd and we're considering it for merge, we can have the conversation, we can re-up this conversation maybe offline uh, about how we wanna coordinate this. Um, Okay, uh, other research updates. I was just going to give some updates on the merge. Um, uh, first of all, uh, we are changing the terminology a bit. Uh, so we now speak execution layer instead of application layer, um, execution engine, execution payload, execution log, and so forth. There is a corresponding PR in the um, stack repository. Um, once this PR, uh, will be merged. Um, I'm about to make a couple of uh, a couple of cleanups more um, in a separate PR, and then it will make sense to start working on making the spec executable, which uh, has been already started by Xiaowei. Uh, thanks a lot for that. Um, so, yeah. Also, um, there is a spec for Rayanism, um, which is um, focused on the um, former proof of work um, clients, uh, how to turn them into the execution engine. And uh, yep, it's like um, almost complete. So need to do also some fixes in that. Um, yeah, so that's probably it for the merge. Uh, also, we have a merge implementers call next week. If you want to discuss some particular technical detail regarding the merge, uh, just reach me out. I'll add it to agenda. That's all for me. Great, and can somebody drop that uh, Ryanism spec into the chat? I think it's a really good document, especially to get people up to speed on execution inside. Yeah, I'll just drop it. So, thanks. Okay, anything else on the research side?
Great. Um, spec discussion, uh, especially on Altair, anything that's come up that people want to discuss, have questions about. Great. And any items in general people would like to bring up on this call? Um, so besides the merge call next week, we'll also do more regular calls for readiness. Um, so if you're interested to stay in the loop, you can attend these kind of office hour calls. These are optional and you can hop in and out on the Discord, in the R&D Discord. Um, and yeah, you're welcome to, to help with the early merge uh, work. Great. Yeah, less formal, more just kind of catching up, asking questions, shooting the shit. Okay, and anything else people have to share or discuss today? Awesome. Again, sorry about all the technical difficulties earlier. Uh, we'll get this up on YouTube soon. Uh, thanks for bearing with me. Have a good one. Talk to you all very soon. Bye, everybody. Everyone, bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.